YouTube. What's going on? It is your guy, Consumer Reviews and DIYs. And as you can see, the dreaded reduced engine power, which means, guys, we are in limp mode. One of the messages that if you're a Chevy, GMC, Cadillac, Escalade owner, you never want to see on that dash. Because, again, you, that means you are in limp mode. So the only thing that you can really try to do is to take your time um, try to diagnose those codes and just move forward and that's what I, what I did I, at first I was driving the truck trying to figure out what was going on maybe you know it was a glitch and the check engine light was accompanied with the traction control that's something that I did notice and if you can pick it up from the audio I mean the, the shifts are horrible um, you can hear the engine is just revving high it's having a hard time shifting and I think I maxed out at about 40 miles per hour, um, which, you know, if you're in a, a city or you're somewhere not on the highway, then, you know, you should be able to make it to your destination. And that's not a recommendation to tell you to keep driving. But I'm giving you my experience and giving you a little bit of perspective. And maybe uh, this will help somebody that goes into Lint mode that they get these messages. So, again, the first step. Um, is to try to diagnose the truck to see exactly what's going on. There was no performance issues prior to the engine and tr traction light coming on. The truck was idling, no, no problems at all. And then I came back to the truck a few moments later and this light was on. Now, if you've been following my channel for any amount of time, you know that the uh, V4, no, the V8, the V4 mode, the AFM, DFM disabler. That's something that I run on my truck in the OBD2 port. And, you know, that was one of the first things that I did is self diagnosis. I took it out of the port because I'm thinking that, hey, maybe something, you know, tweaked out. Maybe I just need to remove it and see if that changes. Drove it around with the uh, attachment off, no changes. So what I did is <clears throat> I didn't have a code reader at the time. So I went to the local AutoZone to see what type of codes were on the system. And this is what I was picking up. Uh, what is that? A P2138 accelerator pedal position. The, that's essentially it is your gas pedal. And I mean, on these modern trucks, they make them, you know, to where it's hooked up to the computer. It's no longer a cable. So AutoZone recommended to buy the assembly to go ahead and replace it. So, all right, it lined up with the code. I went ahead and brought the pedal and, you know, to go ahead and replace it. Now, this isn't a hard job and I'm hoping or was hoping at that particular time that this would solve the issue. So that's the part number that I got. I would have preferred to have a GM original part, but that's what was available given, given the time. I also just looked around the engine bay. I did take off the uh, air box. Looked at the throttle just to see if, you know, maybe it was gunked up. Didn't see anything that was weird. Again, just looking for those, you know, telltale signs as to what the problem could possibly be. But nothing was there. So we'll go ahead and replace the pedal. Now, this is the original pedal. Um, <clears throat> really easy to replace. There are two bolts that hold that into place. And there is an electrical connection connector. Looked at the connections as well. I know that when I did some research, Others were saying that the wires was loose. I didn't I didn't see any wires loose. Everything felt tight. I looked for moisture in the area. I didn't see any moisture as well. So I had kind of ruled out it being a wiring issue uh, from the pedal. And I just went ahead and swapped it out again. Really easy job. So if you do need to perform this job, it's not it's not difficult at all. It had some problems with getting to that bolt. So I did have to take off this uh, air vent right underneath. That's super easy. It's just held in by that push pin. All right, so we swapped it out. And the problem is still here. Uh, what's let, which lets me know <clears throat> that that wasn't the problem. And you know, it's, it's really easy to get frustrated and just start throwing parts at it. And that was something that I, that I, I did not want to do. Uh, so what I did is, since this was a, such an easy job to put it on, I just went ahead and put the original General Motors uh, pedal back on and started to, you know, do a little bit more troubleshooting. So I went ahead and uh, purchased a scan tool that would allow me to get, you know, some of that um, 
vehicle data so I could, you know, measure some of the values in the system, specifically the throttle response and the percentages. So this is a scan tool that I purchased and I went ahead and, you know, read the codes. Utilizing the scan tool, uh, I quickly learned that there are multiple codes in the system, including at P2138, um, but also too, that some of these codes that that's firing uh, in the system are permanent codes, which is something that was uh, kind of new for me. Uh, essentially what happens is when your vehicle fires a permanent code, you have to fix it before it'll be cleared out. And that's the permanent code, the P2128. Um, so I, I tried to erase it again. I had to learn this the, the hard way. And when I seen that it would not erase, this is where I did the research to find out about those permanent codes and that they would have to be uh, fixed before it can be cleared from the system. And I'm sure if you take it to GM, they can do it. But in terms of you, you know, being able to perform that step, it, it not gonna happen. So uh, they went on, I went ahead and left the truck alone, came back out uh, the next day to hook the um, scanner back up to, you know, kind of look at the values again to see if anything had changed. And I noticed that the engine reduced power light or a message did not come on anymore, I went to try a test drive since I noticed it didn't come on and the truck was working without any issue at all, which was just so crazy. Um, I was able to then clear the check engine light off and I've driven a truck about 150 miles since its occurrence and I don't have any issues. I have not put the AFM DFM disabler back on, so I am leaning on that being the issue. It's always good to check um, and check first to see if you're running anything, especially if you have anything in your OBD2 port. I know that some people run the insurance, you know, company modules to monitor speeds and everything. But um, when you're to have something directly running into your computer continuously, I mean, it could be prone to an error. All right, guys, thanks for uh, walking with me uh, through this particular process. Like, comment and subscribe and I will catch you on the next video.